I just made it shorter because I felt like it. <laughs> guys, we about to do this. This is going to be good. Um, you guys always hear me going on and on and on and on and on about how much I love my Insta360 products. So when I was speaking at NAB, my partners over at FMC was like, oh, Insta360 is here. You got to go meet these people. And I was like, man, I feel like I should because since if I buy another thing, I'm going to get kicked out of my house. <laughs> At least I can know why. <laughs> so I had an opportunity to meet Michael and his crew. They were super amazing. Uh, suckered Katie into buying a link in the flow, and now she's in on the fun too. And all of this started in just the most amazing way, and I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. So we wanted to bring uh, Michael on. He's a uh, marketing over there at Insta360 to kind of explain to you why people like me and Rob and all the rest of us who got i360 cameras, like why we just fall in love, right? I want you guys to see it, so maybe you can find a way to work it into your flow. And so we're gonna say what's up to Mr. Michael Shaboom. Mr. Michael, what's up, man? How you doing, Doc? Thanks for having me. Good, good. You know, I have this thing where I give practically everybody nicknames. So you're probably gonna be Shaboom with an M. Sorry, just I can't help it. It's just what I do. It's how I remember everything, because <laughs> otherwise I don't want to forget. So I figure if I make up the name, then I'll never forget. <laughs> it's like that old classic '50s song. Yeah, like Shaboom Shaboom. What what type of name is it anyway? Not that it matters. I'm just curious. That's a really good question. Um, I think somewhere down the line, my lineage came somewhere from the Middle East, but I'm not totally sure because. And then it got converted um, here. And then it got converted here, yeah. But I'm I've uh technically uh um uh from Belarus. Oh, it's so it's funny, it happens all the time in Hawaii because like, you know, uh Ellis Island, right? People when you first come here from Hawaii, people come from all over the, the east. When they get here, somebody transcribes the name wrong in the book. And that's the name. Like, it's all together completely different. So we have names in Hawaii that don't exist anywhere else because it got kind of, like, scrambled in the check-in box somewhere on the way in. So it's pretty funny. All right, cool. Let's get into this. Um, man, tell us, I guess, tell the audience a little bit more about Insta360. And I'm listening to make sure I learn everything I need to know because I am so in love with your company. It's kind of crazy. You guys make some of the funnest products and I think that says something. I really appreciate that. Um, so Insta360, we are, we're an interesting company because um, a lot of people see us as a hardware company that makes camera products. But in reality, um, I like to tell everyone that we're a software company. And uh, being a software company in today's tech world is probably the most important thing that you can do because there's so many different hardware products, but if it's difficult to use them, then you're going to create a bad user experience. And what we'd like to do at Insta360 is we democratize camera products and we make it easier for you to, to use our, to use cameras and to create better content with them on the editing side. So we combine the best of both worlds. And in, um, in just under seven years, uh, Insta360 has gone from being a startup company out of our founders college dorm room to being the, the industry leader in 360 cameras. Um, and we've since branched out to other products, you know, webcams and, and smartphone gimbals, uh, but our core technology 
is really 360 cameras. And and we're, what we've been doing over the past two or three years is showing people how you can use a 360 camera as a normal camera. And when I show a lot of you know potential users how easy it is to use the software and how you can reframe the footage and create these like really unique angles and moments out of the 360, they're amazed because they're like, wow, this is this is the future of the action camera. Um, from from our perspective, the action camera industry um, it has a couple of flaws. Uh, the first one being um, nobody likes to edit their action camera footage from a consumer standpoint. And, and so what you have is you have people who get really excited about going on vacation and, or traveling or, or just everyday life and vlogging and they capture everything, but then it just sits there as glorified archival footage because they hate editing it. And, um, we, I, we identified that issue and I'm guilty of it too. You know, I, I had several Me action too. cameras from, <laughs> right. And, and I have a hard drive somewhere in my garage that says, archived action camera footage like literally archived and because i know i'm never going to do anything with it so um we we saw that as a huge opportunity at insta 360 to show people that editing footage shouldn't be difficult so about three years ago we started on this huge mission to incorporate ai into everything that we do and using ai i know it's a buzzword these days but we truly are using AI for, for, for a huge benefit for people. And, and what we're doing is um, we're using AI to make the editing process easier for people. And we're also using it to give people that aren't trained filmmakers and aren't trained editors with powerful tools to create videos like the pros. And I'll tell, uh, we can talk a little bit more about that later on uh, in terms of what we're doing with Shot Lab and, and some of this auto framing technology that we have. Um, but essentially now, We've now now that we've kind of developed this this idea of using AI for uh, creating powerful content, we're applying that to every single product that we're coming up with. Even our webcam that I'm using right now, so I can gesture control it and move around, and it'll track me. It uses AI to to track the user. We're we're building AI into every product that we make, including our our newest product, which is Flow, uh, a mobile gimbal. Dude, that gimbal is my life right now. I absolutely love that thing. It is so good. And then I'm also super impressed by, like, I use the uh, the camera as well. I normally take it with me when I travel. When I put it here, right, if I switch it to this shot over here, which is locked. But look, I have it just in big head mode. But what I primarily use it for, and I saved buttons for this, is I can go straight to my overhead, and then I even have one that I use called overhead flipped. So I'm, you know, my buddy Dealcasters is here, right? And they do tons of Amazon videos. So what I'm finding is when I'm using it to do an Amazon video, having the link right there, good quality, 4K, for me as a camera person, it's adjustable. So I can put it, take all the automatic stuff off and put it in manual if I want to get there. But if I want to run in the automatic, it works perfectly fine. And then uh, I got rid of all my whiteboards. And now I'm like, I should have kept one because I like the whiteboard feature that's built in. So yeah, this is the amazing camera. And yeah, I think you said something there. I don't really see them as cameras. Which is weird because exactly what they are. To me, it's fun. Like when I pull out my Sony's, I go into, you know, 30 years of professional videographer mode and I start trying to overcomplicate things and make it like a certain way. The thing that's the dopest about like my X3 or even the One RS is I just turn it on and deal with it later. But when you open the footage up in your phone, Shot Lab gives you so many ideas that you can do, or you can just tell it to automatically make you a highlight reel out of cruising with the family on a Sunday, and you got a pretty decent flick at the end. Like the the AI part of it is incredible. It's it's not even just the fact that you get these insane ideas that you normally wouldn't be able to do. It's the fact that you can do a sky replacement or uh, a stop motion effect or any of these like normally 
time consuming effects, you could do them in a couple of minutes, which I think time is is the biggest factor to consider because when you're talking to even a professional, you say, hey, how long would it take you to do a sky replacement? And oh, you know, it could take me a couple of hours to do. Well, why didn't you do it on this one project? Well, it's because I didn't have the time to do it. So so now, you know, all from your phone, you can do all this stuff super easily and quickly. And when you go into Shot Lab, it gives you a very simple guide, like a minute to minute long instruction of this is the setting that you use on the camera. This is how you hold the camera. This is how you place it. And then the app, you import the footage and the app does the rest of the processing for you. Great. And, and, and it does a fantastic job. I think the hardest thing for me when I was trying to show people this, like for them to get their head around, is that you can, the, here, you know what? I'm going to have a hard time saying it myself. Let me come in here and I'm going to pull this up. <laughs> right now, it's, it's looking at probably the flow because that's what I've been using a lot lately. But um, if I were to, hopefully I have something here in the album. If I go into this album here and I look at, you know, these are all flow videos. Hello, where's the 360 video? Is this a 360 video? Maybe it is. Yeah, there. Look, people, I can scrub around this. You don't have to just see me speed walking around in Vegas. Like, I'm literally just holding this thing on a stick and it's everywhere. Now, you don't see the stick in my hand, but the shadow. <laughs> the, shadow get, the shadow gives it away. They haven't figured out how to get rid of the sun yet, <laughs> but you, you need the sun. We're working it's on important. it. It's important, but look at this. Like everything is good. You can see my head is on fire in the desert. Um, the quality is kind of incredible. And even if I pop over here, right, just by, let me, I'm going to mess this up just because you're here. If I were to click on this viewfinder and I can adjust sort of where it is on the globe, this time right now, people, I'm moving my phone. Notice I'm holding my phone up and down and it's allowing me to find the view by holding it. That's crazy. <laughs> Every time I get in here and there's, touch it, there's, it's crazy. <laughs> there's a couple of like really small things that most people would never notice that make a world of difference. So like for me, I think one of the coolest reason uh, benefits of shooting in 360 is because we have so many different platforms that we're creating content for these days you're creating your vertical video you're creating your horizontal video you're creating your square video even a cinematic aspect ratio and when you do that with a normal camera you have to either flip the camera or you have to crop in and re lose resolution or um you're just sitting there resizing footage forever and right. if you take one 360 clip all you need to do is push one button and you can get it into whatever aspect ratio you want. So for, for social content creators, this is a game changer. Yes. Now this here, this is a really cool thing. I'll show you guys. I was at, this is Hameji castle in Japan and there's a lot of people in this shot. Right. And including me, it's just doing a spin around. However, what you can do is tell it to take one minute of basically time-lapse footage and it erases all the people this one person <laughs> i don't know where they came from but there was a lot more people in here and you can't tell so i could easily get this guy out in photoshop but it looks like i'm at the castle by myself and that is not the case there's actually people there but like it does cool things like that which just you know always blow my mind um, yeah, I have lots of footage in here from me being in Japan. Some of it I haven't even messed with yet, but you know, we're just like walking around temples. And again, you just stop it here and say, like Michael said, I want to put this on, I want to do this as a YouTube video, right? So I could just switch it to that. When I export this video, I'm going to get, you know, like the real deal, holy feel YouTube look, right? Um, you have things that you can do with the coloring. You can adjust the sort of lighting and stuff. It, this is really, really handy. And let me answer this question, Lester, because you asked, how can you use this in your desktop workflow? That is a very handy question. So here's this. This is my Insta360 X3 posted up as an additional camera in my room because, like, I swear it was a week ago. 
<laughs> Michael guys drop the firmware that allows it to work, you know, as, as an extra camera for Ecamm. Normally I would probably use my other, I know this is now I'm humble bragging. I would probably use this <laughs> as my extra camera for Ecamm. Um, due to the fact that it's a flat lens in this particular case, but this camera had both. It had 360 lenses and a flat lens, so you can use either or, and they both work as a webcam. So there's that. You you, you mentioned something that's really, really interesting, uh, and I wanted to expand on it a little bit. The effect that you use is called Ghost Town for when you how you can remove people from your shot. And... Um, I just wanted to tell people about like the actual engineering that's going into an effect like that. It's it's mind blowing. So with everything that we do, we're we're kind of like hacking the camera, and by hacking the camera, we're finding ways of making simple or complex processes easier. So if you were to think about like how would I remove fifty people from a normal shot, well, you'd have to go there frame by frame, and you'd have to remove that person each frame it's doable but you're going to spend a lot of time doing it the way that we've figured out how to do it is we actually shoot a time lapse video and when people are moving through the frame allows you to take those frames um independently and reconstruct them together without the person in the shot it that's it's cool. um it's it, it's 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 absolutely insane that is super cool. You did you did a gesture, and the link thought you wanted it to do something, and it flicked your audio for like a split second, but then it realized you weren't doing that gesture. So that's the one thing about gesture control. If you like me, I start moving my hands, and the camera starts thinking I'm talking. I'm like, no, 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 I'm just being Puerto Rican at that moment. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I like. Let's see how if I can get it. In. Oh, the zoom in. Okay, I got it back. The yeah, the part. zoom in part is super, super, super good, right? Like I, uh, I use that a lot. I actually, I find myself using the actual controls more than just doing the hand gesture because I talk with my hands so much, I'll freak it out. <laughs> but super cool, man. Shot Lab. I'll say here's one of my favorites, and I just to show you guys. Okay, so for me, when I first got into this process. I was doing a conference with Rob Valls. He's one of our users. And he just had the little white uh, Insta360 Go just like pinned to his chest. I'm like, Rob, why are you walking around with the Iron Man thing on your chest? And he's like, oh, I'll show you tonight after you know we go to dinner. And he started showing <laughs> all the clips from the conference that he had picked up the whole way through. And I was like, oh, in a world where everything is content, you need to show content to promote your shows. So again, going back to Lester's question, not that it was a bad question, it's a fantastic question. How could I use this in my desktop workflow? Well, one of the important parts of every show is not just the show itself, it's pre-production and post-production. So your audience wants to see BTS, behind the scenes. You wanna have a, a for instance, like a, how you're setting up. You can do a time-lapse of yourself setting up. If you show a complicated process, like maybe something as simple as you're writing an outline of a workshop you're hosting on a whiteboard and you put this guy in time lapse mode or time shift mode and you just press record and you start building the workshop and they just see you moving around the office 100 miles an hour, seeing the work you put in. Those things generate FOMO. They generate, you know, so we always do that for Ecamm. We're about to do a workshop. We're always showing behind the scenes stuff. And we're using our YouTube shorts, 50 billion views a day. Run that back. You have a channel and you guys always ask me, how do I get more people to my channel? And YouTube makes a thing that gets 50 billion eyeballs a day. That's what you use this for. You use this for the, that snack at Costco. You know, you go to Costco and they're like, Hey Mike, Taste this tuna fish on crackers. Next thing you know, you got two cases of that crap in your cart. <laughs> That's what it's for. <laughs> it's We've seen so many different users. Like there, there's professionals that are using it for specialty shots inside of, you know, big budget movies. You know, you bring it in for, for one shot. You put it on a, 
a 25 foot selfie stick and and there's your crane shot right there right for uh, or if you're if you're on a lower budget we've seen people use more and more shots to replicate traditional cinema shots if you're a social media content creator and you're a one person crew we we've started seeing people use X3 as their primary camera for everything right if you're filming by yourself um and you want to be able to create those drone like shots around you all you need is a 360 camera and an invisible selfie stick so it's it's crazy how many different people out there in the industry are using it for for certain purposes yeah i think you're right uh, the thing that that was mind blowing to me is when i'm going to japan right there's a lot of rules about drones and especially in cities that are busier like kyoto or tokyo bust out that three meter stick which is nine feet and some change right that thing i'm here somewhere so do i it looks like a drone shot <laughs> when you can't fly a drone oh you know what it's probably upstairs in my in my house oh i lied look when i'm in the guys when i'm in the office my three meter stick is actually connected to my desk using a tripod clip that doesn't want to come out there it is. So I can use it as an overhead shot in my room. So this thing is legit. It will go all the way back there to the TV. This small little stick expands to like 300 centimeters. <laughs> it's just so silly. <laughs> it's every, totally every, insane. Every 30 is, is 12 inches. Just remember that. <laughs> so this thing is stupid. Long. And and we and we have people getting insanely creative with them. Like uh, I, I have a, a buddy who does cliff diving. And instead of taking a drone and we actually did this in Hawaii uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, we went to some of the biggest cliffs out there and instead of getting an FPV drone and tracking the person down as they jumped off the cliff, we just threw the selfie stick down with the camera. The camera's waterproof and it falls at the same rate as uh, a cliff jumper. And so it, it get it gave me this, like the most unique shot I've ever seen, which is pretty much impossible to get with any other camera. And it's, it literally is a side-by-side -side shot of the camera falling with the cliff diver the whole way down. Um, so there's, there's like your, your, your creative, it should, should be taken completely off the leash when it comes to using one of these cameras. Like you're, um, you have so many different options and you have so many different ways of using the camera. Um, for a lot of people, it could get overwhelming. And so if you use the app, actually like there, I always tell people it can be as automated as you want or as customized as you want, because we're not just catering to one specific user, right? And we're not we're not limiting people to say, this is the absolute workflow that you need to use because that, that would make our products fail. We want people to be able to use it the way that they want to use it because everyone has a different style and a different imagination and a different way that, that they want the product to function. So like if you're if you're in the app, there's like four or five completely different ways of reframing. And that's just one aspect of it, right? You can, like you were showing, you can use your phone to reframe by using the gyroscope of the phone. Um, you can set keyframes inside of the app. You can use AI tracking to track a subject to create these like really smooth pan shots. Um, you can use auto frame, which is uh, our AI algorithm basically coming in and taking your 360 footage, digesting it, and giving you recommended reframe shots based on what it deems as uh, good shots. So there's there's just so many different possibilities. One of my favorite shots I ever ever took with this thing was um, I was in Amazon Spheres and I just tossed it in the air. <laughs> and when it does that that little, uh, what is it called? Flow, flow? No, it's not called flow. That's the name of the stick. I forgot what that shot is called. It's, in, it's part of Shot Lab. We oh freeze throw. You throw it in the air. In the highest point, the accelerometer basically does a three sixty view of where it is at its highest point and then you catch it and it makes the most incredible videos and i posted that and got like eleven thousand views on the short in like an hour which is psycho like that is just kind of incredible so yeah those are the kind of things that i think you could do with it but again to me the biggest struggle for creators now everyone in here listen to this closely the biggest struggle for us as creators is actually creating and because they're taking it from a software approach and it's actually fun to use this camera, you will start to use it for fun. You know what I mean? Here, let me show you this. Let me switch over real quick. Yeah, th this is a prime example. All right, let's put.
put you right there. All right. Ooh. So this is um, this is a partner of ours who who thought of this shot called the javelin shot, and you can basically just javelin out your three hundred and sixty and then combine it all, match cut it in different locations, and it's like what? it's like a combination of a drone shot and a tiny planet shot, and you could do this super easily on your own. You just flick out the selfie stick, but it looks so crazy because our eyes just aren't trained to seeing anything like this, you know, unless you're watching crazy CG or special crazy. effects, but this is all in camera. Super crazy. Oh my man. I'm going to be the idiot running around my neighborhood today. doing that. They're going to be looking at me like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> That's totally crazy. So cool. He's just javelining out. So is that in shot? And there's, or you just do it after you just do it yourself in the app. No, so so something like this is is done in the app by yourself. It's super easy. Um, all all it is is the motion of javeling out the camera, and then and then when you when the camera's going out, you just tell the app that you want it to be in the tiny planet, and and that's it. There's like there's no magic to it, dude. People, that's incredible. That's incredible. So for for our content creator's sake, we, there's a, there's three primary cameras I think that matches what everyone's doing. One is the X3, and it's really trippy because I bought my One RS late in its life. I bought my One RS probably like three four months before the X3 came out, and I didn't even think twice about instantly changing it to the X3. Then I found I have use for both. The best thing about the One RS now is I keep the flat lens, the 4K mod on there the majority of the time. And then when I want 360, I end up using the S3. So I'm happy to have both. Um, the link is what Michael's currently using as his webcam. And the quality is insane. And just, again, to show you guys, I'll pop my overhead link on right here. And just open the app and put it into position one, which I had it doing something stupid like looking at the the Manchester United logo on my shirt. But I mean, look at it. The, the quality of the camera is good. You're seeing it in two different lighting situations. My room is relatively dark, um, you know, and it's just a fantastic camera. But I like the fact that I can just bring it back with a button press to get it right back to my overhead shot. So the link is probably the most common for our eCam users. But I think there's a lot to be said about getting out and shooting this type of epic content. Like, wait, I switched. Let's camera. talk about this for a second. Because cause you, you're literally making it look so easy where you're creating this overhead shot. And that's, that's something that a lot of creators spend thousands and thousands of dollars doing by, by using a DSLR it. with a rail. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. So... Uh, can you can you talk a little bit about how, in without the link in a normal perspective, how you would do an overhead shot? Oh my my buddy just literally bought this. Brandon Washington B Wash, he just did a thing where he unboxed his rail system to put his Canon EOS R up there, and actually he has an R six up there, and then the cabling, and I'm like, bro. You just dropped like three grand on your overhead setup. Mine's 300 bucks. It would do the same thing. <laughs> I just think it's better. Exactly it. I think the Insta360 link is better. And my favorite part about it is I can take it on the road, right? I just pick it up and take it on the road. Um, it's see. um it goes with this theme of of just democratizing camera tech for everyone you know you shouldn't be you shouldn't have to spend thousands of dollars buying fancy gear just to get one shot that you want if you have a creative vision and you know what you want to achieve um we like to give you the products um to be able to do that uh on a on an efficient budget yes and, and this this is the best if for people who just want a webcam there's nothing better. Like this is quite amazing. The audio is very good. The the picture quality is very good. The app is quite feature rich. Uh, the only upgrade I would ask for, which is purely software actually, would be 
to let the audio have some mic modeling. In other words, I can say, uh, let me EQ it a little bit or, you know, fancify it just in case it's the only camera I take when I go on a hotel trip. Hotel rooms just sound weird. So I'm an audio person. I know to just put towels around it. Like I just ball up a bunch of towels from the bathroom and sit it right behind the notebook and that deflects some of your sound. It makes it sound less hollow. I also know that if I could put it up against a curtain, like if I can put the table next to the curtain in the hotel room by the window and put the MacBook in front of the curtain, talking at the curtain will automatically crush a large portion of those bouncy sounds you get in a hotel room, right? But most people don't know that. So the only thing I would say that it would be cool to add in software is just a way to pretty up the audio. But this thing is dope. The tracking, incredible. Uh, it can even do that thing I, that I, continuity camera tries, that continuity camera fails at, which is looking at your desk from the top of your Mac. <laughs> I mean, can we just address the elephant in the room, which is which is we're in 2023. Why why has it taken this long for somebody to make an actual 4K webcam? You know, <laughs> most of the webcams on the market are 720, 1080. I mean, we have 4K cell phones now. Why wouldn't we have a 4K webcam? This is so true. <laughs> it's so true. And the, again, when I of all the ones that I've tried on the market, it's literally one of the better looking webcams out there. Um, it, it just does some pretty incredible things. And yeah, I, I think that's the part that's good. So uh, Zulia Tech uh, says, how can I use the Insta360 in Zoom? I have a Mac and I've already updated everything. It doesn't work. Uh, depends on which camera. Because I'm using this is my X3 right here, and it it just once I did the update, it works perfectly fine. And then I also have my One RS, which was my overhead camera until the link came out. So I used to use this as my overhead camera. And this again, you just plug it in. The only thing you have to be really paying attention to is that when you go in the menu here, one of the modes says when you connect it to USB, what do you want it to do? Read the memory card or go into webcam mode. So as long as you have that set, you should be gravy, unless you have a, a different camera. So yeah. For, for Zoom, it should just work. If you if you select your camera, if you go to video settings and you you just want to make sure that you switch over from your built-in webcam on on your computer and you select the Insta360 link, and then it should work automatically. No, this X3. Oh, yeah, for X3. X, the X3, I you see. just have to make sure that you have it on in webcam mode and you can tell because the light on the bottom is green instead of red normally when you have it connected the light is red but if the light is green you know you're in webcam mode if the light is blue then it's just on and not talking to your computer yet it's a, it, it, it kind of makes it easier you know what messed me up at first which is super funny i was like it's broken and I was like, because I kept getting the, uh, here, wait, I'll put it on. This is super funny. This image right here, I was like, oh, it's broken. I don't know what the hell's going on. It was doing this. And then I was like, you know, dummy, that's uh, because it's looking at both cameras. So you press the camera icon, the, and it will switch to the right lens. So you can do that lens. You can look at the other lens. So, yeah, it's super cool. So you just have to remember to do that as well. It, it, it took me a, a minute, and I was like, you know, you should probably read the instructions. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> I'm like, I know how to use Insta360. I don't need no instructions. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some of the AI stuff that you guys are working on. Because to me, that's what sort of makes the X3 and the One RS so amazing. There's a lot of AI that's been built in over the years. And it's been developed and it's gotten better. The first thing that that we did with ai was about three years ago and it was um a technology that we created called flash cut and what flash cut does is it basically is an auto editor so there are templates in our app that you can select if you're traveling if you're playing sports if you're just doing daily vlog stuff if you're driving whatever you're doing there's probably a template for it and then once you select the template the app will interpret uh, the clips that are inside of your app that are associated with that template. And it will pull in the right clips to create a, um, a category-based story for you. 
And then on top of that, what the AI does is it determines based on uh, hundreds of thousands of preloaded photos and, and uh, videos that are available online publicly, um, it will select the best portion of each clip. So, um, and, and it basically like, you know, I guess the, the conclusion is, is flash cut the best uh, auto editing tool out there? Does it replace the need for using a traditional editor? Probably not, but is it a really good starting point for giving you a baseline video edit that you can then go and tweak and do all sorts of other stuff to? It's perfect, right? I think the biggest, the, the most challenging part of editing is getting started and how do you initially get all of your footage onto a timeline? But if it's there and you want a different portion of one of the clips, then you can adjust that. If you want to swap out one of the clips that it selects, you can do that. Um, so it's it basically is a, is a really great starting point and then you could totally customize it or you could just take it as is. So that was kind of where we started. And then we started thinking, well, how do we build upon that? How do we give people more options for them to choose from? And so we we created um, a tech after that called AutoFrame. And what AutoFrame does is it uses AI to scan your entire 360 video and give you recommendations for reframe shots from that. And I think the it solves a really big pain point of, you know, um, our generation we're used to single lens cameras. This is a completely new technology for us. And so having having the mind to basically go in and say, okay, well, I need to do an extra step now, which is reframing, it, it, it can turn a lot of people off. But what we've done is we've made it easier for people to do that by giving them a bunch of different options for reframing, including just automating the whole thing. And then we, we took that to even the next step with ShotLab now, which is the most advanced form of AI that we've built into our app ever. And it started with two or three templates um, that people can can basically play around with. And it's now grown to over 30 different templates that you can access, including one of my favorite ones that you're highlighting right now, which is a star lapse mode. Star -lapse um, is sick. <laughs> personally, I, I think nighttime photography is one of the hardest modes of photography ever because you really need to understand manual camera settings. You need to have good processing power and good sensors that will let in enough light. You really need to be a master of the camera to understand star photography. But what we've done is we've automated the whole thing where all you're doing is you're going out, you're selecting the star lapse mode. The camera is going into its own manual settings. It's dialing in uh, shutter, ISO, white balance, all the, the advanced camera settings that a lot of people aren't trained to, to be able to adjust. It's doing that on its own. And then it's editing out for you a whole video with star trails and all sorts of other cool things. So um, that that's just one example. You know, we have, um, I, if you guys want, even if you don't have the camera, you can still download the Insta360 app and you can go into ShotLab and you can explore all of these different templates that we have out there. We have there's cool things like, cool um, you know, there. there's, there's transitions. I think personally, the most complicated thing that we've simplified in shot lab is the stop motion stuff because yep, stop right motion here. is, I mean, you've doc, you've been doing this for 30 years, right? You know how, how difficult stop motion is to do. Um, it's notoriously painful because it takes a long time to shoot stills at, in a bunch of different locations and match your, the shape of your body. And then it takes a bunch of time to composite and process those stills together and putting it into a video. And what we've done again is we've hacked the method to create a stop motion by instead of taking hundreds of different stills, um, you're now taking three minutes of video. And after you take three minutes of video, the AI is crawling through each of those videos and it's pulling out frames that your body is facing the same direction and that your feet are facing the same direction. And it's making it look like you've taken a bunch of stills in a stop motion effect. So it's it's actually like the way that our engineers, the the, the engineers that work at Insta three hundred and sixty are the best in the world, and though those guys are, they're they're looking at like, how do we go against the grain with everything that we do, you know, in terms of the technology. They are so good. I'm trying to see if I have one of the ones where I did I did one in Seattle with the sideways walking trick, and it is so incredible. And it looks like, you know, you're just floating along 
<laughs> but the city is flying by you. It almost looks like you're moonwalking at some point. But yeah, absolutely incredible um, how it comes out. And again, people, none of this stuff is hard. I think what it does is it gives you a a fun way to create. And once you start creating because you're having fun, you're able to just add a whole different complement to what you're doing. That's the best way to explain it. That's that's so true. And and uh, anybody that that's considering getting one you have to get the invisible selfie stick. It's like it's like bread and butter, you know. Uh, it, it's you, I don't think the 360 camera will function without the invisible selfie stick because you get so many creative options once that selfie stick erases. Yes. Oh, one of the best things that we did. <laughs> this is super funny, and this is the part that also blows my mind. Stabilization inside of Insta 360 is at a level that is pretty hard to wrap your head around. It just is. Okay, so we were in uh, Spokane, and I was with my buddy Diana, her first time riding a scooter. And she was, like, uh, apprehensive at first. But I was like, come on, it'll be fun. So we finally decided to go ride the scooter, and I just strapped it on, and then I recorded us riding it. And it was the most incredible thing of how smooth the footage was as we're riding around on the bumpy streets. And you can't even tell, like it's borderline clear. The footage was just amazing. And I thought that was one of the best parts. I think it's really hard to explain to people how good the stable, the stability is on Insta360 cameras. That's that's another like major advantage of why you would use a 360 camera because when you're capturing the whole sphere, then it's much easier to stabilize the images, and and at that point you don't even need a gimbal. Anybody that's using a gimbal uh, with their camera, you can replace that whole kit with just an Insta 360 camera. And the way it works is there's a six-axis gyroscope that's built directly into the camera, so. You know, this tiny little camera has um, a gyroscope that's constantly calculating all of the stabilization data. And and then it uses a, a proprietary digital stabilization algorithm that we've made in-house called FlowState to stabilize it further. So there's actually two layers of stabilization happening. It's pretty incredible. Th this was just me walking around the top of the Space Needle and just being absolutely amazed at how well it does at keeping that horizon relatively level while I'm literally flying around the Space Needle and you can't even tell because it's, it's literally that smooth. So yeah, people, I, th I think again, to me, one of the big ones for us is that, <laughs> this is a funny comment from Gallopy Horse. I have the Insta360 and the flow and I'm still in disbelief. I have magic powers now. That is my feelings exactly. Every time it does something, I'm editing and I start giggling and then Karen looks at me like, damn, you've been smoking Maui Waui again? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just over here editing away, having a good time laughing at this. Here, folks, I'll throw some, I'll throw another one on that you can see, which is pretty incredible. This is that flow state, um, the freeze throw. So I just hold it. I toss it in the air. It has to be a meter or higher. This is probably about two meters up. And it just does a, a cool little look around. And yeah, absolutely incredible. So what's on the, what's in the future for you guys? Like, What else are you guys coming out with? Because I swear, so far, everything that you made has seemed like, you know, it's just been automatically good. <laughs> I, 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 I swear, I can't tell you how many people have, have come up to us at events and been like, I never knew that a simple thing like a mobile gimbal could could be so amazing. And and what we've done is we're looking at new product categories and we're thinking about how we can redefine those categories. Um, the mobile gimbal category was absolutely new for us. Webcams was new. Um, every every vertical and every product category that we touch, we're gonna bring some sort of innovation to it. Um, we're gonna make it we're going to make it an Insta360 type of product with whatever we do. And um, if you look at our trend for innovation, it's absolutely insane. We released five new products last year. 
And yes, when you did. think about the size of our company, we did. We we have um it was my I didn't sleep a lot because we were just moving from product launch to product launch. Um but it was worth it because we gave people something that they truly value in in a consumer tech product. Um we have big plans for the next year. We have uh we have a bunch of new products planned. Um we have a couple more coming this year. We have, you know, a handful more coming next year. Um, it's going to be stuff that a lot of people never thought that we would make. Um, Doc, you're probably going to you're going to be spending a lot more money on on our product over the next uh, get kicked, 18 to get 24 out of months. My house. So listen, when I get the email and the email has a little clock, I'll just get I get <laughs> just like a emotional thing that comes over me because uh, listen guys when you subscribe to Insta360 email list they'll send you a video it's like coming in eight days and here's a clock counting down and I swear I look at that thing every time <laughs> like oh god here it goes here goes another one uh, Marie I'll show you in just a second give me one second okay look let me show you guys this so this is one of eight don't do that this is one of those freeze tosses that i did and again i just throw this in the air it's like you know doing his little action right there but just to show you right if i go in here and i pull up insights right that's like ten thousand views on a single play and you know it's not about the vanity metrics but it's about the fact that you can use these things to get people to just say okay this is an interesting account i'll keep an eye out on it and then you'll see like if you know you start to gain any traction from it, right? So when you look into here, you see that of the people that watched this, 9,000 of them were non-followers. And you know, you will actually come in, you'll pick up some some credit. So just to show you, it's more than just a gimmick. This is that walking sideways looking thing. Doesn't work good on on us uh, fluffy people. It makes us look odd, but it does work. And then just me, uh, this another one of the cool things is you walk around in circles and it makes copies of you walking around in the circle. It's actually pretty incredible. This is inside the Amazon co-working space and the employees are like, what the hang is this guy doing? And then here's another one where again, I'm just doing, this is my favorite one. I don't know why I fell in love with this one because I know to create this requires me to bring uh, like a lot of equipment and I get to do this without a lot of equipment, right? This is just me walking around in Seattle acting a fool, <laughs> just like, but it, it, it brings a lot of fun to the party. So Marie, to your point, to me, this is the best part of it. You can absolutely edit on your iPad. Cause what I end up doing, if you go all the way back to when we started this conversation, Michael tells you that people that we ran a while with these, we shot a lot of footage, and then we came and we stuck it in our computer, and like I'm gonna edit it one day, and we have an entire hard drive with <laughs> terabytes. <laughs> Snow stuff, underwater stuff, motorcycle connected stuff. I got I got lots of footage of me DJing because I used to put the other camera in my DJ booth, and you could just see drunk people trying to climb in and do all the kind of weird stuff. So, yes, you can edit on your phone. I would highly suggest not to make you spend more money that or this is the microphone one, but there's an attachment like this known as the speed reader. I, I have one somewhere nearby. And what I do with that is I actually connect that on the side of my camera instead of using the phone app because the files are big. If you shoot like me, everything in its highest set. Look, it's following you around the office. <laughs> That's so cool. It, look, it just falls. There you go. You need that. That quick reader makes it easier because all you do is pull it off the side of the camera, stick it into your phone. It copies through a lot quicker so you can edit. And then, yes, I do a lot of my editing on the iPad just because it's bigger and can't see. <laughs> Thank you, Keely. See, Keely? I would say, Keely, I would say editing on your mobile is... Um, Editing on mobile or iPad is probably 90% quicker than editing on your computer. There there are some advantages to editing on your computer. Like if you want to be able to export at the ult ultimate highest resolution and bit rate, it's just something that mobile phone processors can't handle. So about a week ago, we in the same update that we rolled out with the webcam mode, 
there's another um, editing workflow update that we came up with. And it's, it's actually amazing because you can edit everything on your phone using the ease of use of just your gyro based editing. And then all of those edits will save uh, onto your card and you take the quick reader and you plug it into your computer and um, it'll save your edits. And then you can just export from our free desktop studio. And so it, it combines the best of both worlds, ease of use of mobile editing and power of exporting on your desktop. One of the cool things about the desktop is the Final Cut and the Premiere plugin too. So if you do want to use it as B-roll footage, you know, people are like, we all use these apps to get our B-roll footage. But if you're in a position, especially you, Marie, being in San Diego, you got the best B-roll in the back in, in your whole neighborhood. So you just do like shots of your events. Okay, so here, Marie, let's put it this way. You're doing your real estate maneuver, right? And so Marie has two two different parts of her life. One is helping to promote uh, food, restaurants, and things. And the other one is a real estate business. So in your real estate biz, all you gotta do is take one of these, right? And attach this to your phone, and you can FaceTime your client and show them basically the house, nice smooth walkthrough with this. It actually, in the app, I don't know, get the name wrong, there is a live mode. What live mode allows you to do is run the Insta360 app in the background, but switch over to like Instagram or YouTube and stream. But the, you know, a lot of the gimbals, when you leave the app, everything's dead. This doesn't do that. Like it still can control some certain things while you're using another app to stream out. So you could do a private YouTube stream or a private IG stream with you know a potential buyer and show them the house but still have all the dope functionality of the flow right i love that portion of this um or you could just shoot stuff for them and just send them clips but i mean you're you live in a great b-roll state so always have either this in your hand or the x3 in your hand and just be shooting you don't have to point so and i was in san diego two months ago i'm riding the bird scooter or whatever the heck they call that thing spin i'm riding the scooter i got the stick in my hand and just trying not to crash and it works you just you know just good beautiful b-road of the area so <laughs> i have if you don't want to hold the stick in your place. hand we have like we got a bunch of uh accessories we have everything from backpack mounts to chest mounts to head mounts like pretty much any accessory that you've ever seen on an action camera you can use with our products. So you're not just limited to using the selfie stick. Um, you, you, the, the world is your oyster when it comes to accessories. I stopped with the head mount because it kept messing up my hair. I'm joking. I look so, <laughs> so goofy with the head mount on. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is one of your guys' mounts, this little thing right here. Anybody that rides a motor, motor vehicle, like a motorcycle or a scooter or whatever, the, the mounts that they have, they have special ones for bicyclists and things like that, which is also really good. Um, the Okay, listen, the X3 itself doesn't really, that's the vibration dampener? Yeah, we've, we have like ultra specialty accessories. If you, if you uh, ride in helicopters or you have um, high speed cars or motorcycles that have high frequency vibrations, there's like a cool little adapter that you can get and it, it um, basically just moves around and it absorbs those those vibrations. So like we've pretty much thought of, of every accessory that you would need. Okay, real estate person, check this out, Marie. You can actually use your Insta360 camera in conjunction with Matterport and make those full sick Matterport walkthroughs, but not pay nine grand for them. You can literally just take the photos <laughs> with your Insta360 and the Matterport software knows what to do with it. Uh, Brady did one. Uh, you could try it out for free, but then I think you buy the software. It's not that expensive, but yeah, you can do Matterport walkthroughs using Insta360. That makes sense. I'll Both show you one that I did course. with uh, with an X3. Oh, that's oh, cool. Sec. Let me see. Let me put you back over here. I was looking for the Matterport software. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I actually just did this one. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, 
Yeah. So actually, this was with the X2. This is the previous generation of the camera, but you'll you'll get the idea of it. So this is a really Yo, nicely lit oh room, boy. and you get the Matterport style dollhouses. It looks amazing, right? It looks like it was shot with a Matterport camera. I think the thing to look for are the straight edges right here, um, and the differentiation between the rooms. And then you can pop into that whole space. You can self navigate. And I, I would say it's about 90% the quality of a Matterport camera at about a tenth of the price. Yep. <laughs> and um, and about five times faster to capture because when you think about what the Matterport camera does, it takes a photo, it turns, it takes another photo, it turns, it takes another photo until it gets that full 360. And that takes about a minute per photo. And with the Insta360 camera, it's only taking one photo. So you can get each photo in about five seconds and move on. So this this whole space took me about thirty minutes to capture, and then um, and then it just processes in the in the Matterport cloud. Isn't that crazy? This camera right here is six grand. Okay, that's what you guys know. It's six grand. The this camera right here. Let's go back one. Is Four hundred dollars. It does the same thing. You can buy the Titan, which would be just incredible. But you don't need to. You can literally <laughs> do it with this one. And this well, for for really real estate nice. agents, we do have another camera. We we the have um inch. like if you really yeah we have the one inch three sixty, which is which is really awesome. It it's like it's the same. Um, you use it the same way as you would an X three. It just has bigger sensors. So it has dual one inch sensors and it was actually a collaborative camera that we made with Leica and Leica came to us and said, we love what you guys are doing. Um, we want to build some glass for you. And that's how the collaboration kind of started. So if you're, if you want to make your real estate photography look unbelievable inside, get the one inch 360. It's not a huge increase on cost. It's 799 compared to 450, but the quality of your scans are, are going to be, a lot better indoors man that thing is in freaking incredible i was at a final cut pro global summit i was walking around with the x3 and mark spencer was running around with his one inch and i was just like dude you're gonna get me so kicked out of my house <laughs> <laughs> because the thing is so cool it is absolutely amazing so so people the, the main thing the main takeaway here listen for if you just want something to add to your desktop link is incredible. It just gives you another angle, another shot, overhead shot, portability when you want to go on the road and things like that. For your promotional game to help you with your marketing, to help you with your B-roll, or even as something that you might add into your show. Because with compliments of something like um, camo or cable, I can throw my phone on this bad boy and put it on, what's that app called? NDI HX Capture. And so Ecamm picks it up right away. So for instance, I'll take this. There's a little white marker on the front that tells you, make sure you point it at the camera. I kind of have it semi-memorized at this point. And look, don't even have to take off my case. I'm leaving my case on there. And the thing that makes this camera dope is I'll go from zero to deployed in a matter of seconds. So here's the thing. Let me take the cable out, break something. So here's the setup. I connect it. I'm deployed. That's it. The app actually comes up on the screen that says, do you want to open the Insta360 app? Right? So you already, you don't have to fumble. Now, I don't know how to say this right, Michael, but you can help me. One of the things that all the other gimbals break is when you have to do something, if you leave the app and you have to go to something that is landscape, you always have to do stuff with your gimbal to adjust it. This thing figures it out and it will automatically switch to landscape for you when you're in an app that requires you to do, I think I said that right. Anyway, tell me if I said that wrong. No, you're absolutely right. Even if you go to like, if you're, if you're recording in landscape mode and you go to your general homepage on the app, um, it'll automatically go into vertical because it knows that you want to be able to explore the rest of the app. Or um, if you get a phone call, and you're shooting in landscape, it'll automatically go back into into vertical. So um, it's just the little things that we look at for for user experience that make a huge difference. All right, so I'm going to show you guys what he means by this. I'm going to go to H 
HX Capture. Um, th this may or may not break this because NDI is basically going to wirelessly transmit this over to Ecamm because that's just how we roll, right? So now my phone is here. If I were to switch this guy and say, do this, there's NDI HX Capture. Why'd you do that, Doc? <laughs> I meant to do it like this. Here, I'll pop this here. I'm going to switch this into tall for a second. Okay, so there's my phone. You're basically just looking at my screen, right? So if I move this out of the way and then go to the Insta360 app, it automatically switched back to the right way. Now, it's sideways to you guys, but you can see from the phone, it's right there. Now, watch. When I switch this back to the home screen, it flips it back around because it just knows I have something I need to do. That level of, that tiny thing right there was institute a cart because when I fight my other <laughs> gimbal that has three letters, uh, I was always fighting it. And then when you just grab it and turn it because you don't feel like doing things, it gets pissed off and starts yelling at you. It's like, don't grab me. I was like, I'll grab you if I want to. I'll pay for you. you know, because it, it becomes like a little bit feisty. Now, here's the other thing that I will say for you guys that I absolutely loved about this guy. In the top here, and I don't know if I can make this go sideways. In the top here, there's a button that puts it into a mode that's called Shot Genie Library. And it looks something like this. It tells you what to shoot. It legit tells you what to shoot. So you can't mess up. You know what I'm saying? And now, if, yes, I can absolutely use this gimbal in Ecamm. Now I'll show you how what I mean. I have I have a bunch of stuff on the screen at the moment, but um we're going to ignore that just because I don't feel like wasting time to take it off. I could come in here, rotate this this way, put this into the right format, go back to 16 by 9. It's upside down, hit it twice, but bam. So now I'm in my gimbal. I can walk you around my office, show you, you know, Lord Vader, Steve over here, you know, random things. You know, I can take my gimbal on a walkabout in the middle of my stream. So if I had to show somebody, people often ask me questions about my lighting. That was too fast. Oh, I know what I did. I hit the power off button with my finger like a dummy. <laughs> there you go. But I can legit just show you around and hold the lock button. So now it's going to stay in place. It's not moving, right? If I let it go, it does this. Here's another key feature, folks. If I flip this bad boy around and face it at my face, if I, I guess I should do it this way. You'll notice it's tracking me now. Oh, click the trigger. I did. There you go. It got me. Right <laughs> Now it's tracking me. So you could actually use this as an additional camera for, for Ecamm. Uh, this doesn't have a way to make all the interface disappear, like, like uh, Filmic Pro, but... I think Filmic Pro is already updated to understand this. And so it's the same thing. You could just do it in Filmic Pro. We don't we don't have a hide interface button feature yet, but I know somebody we can talk to. <laughs> so yes. You you can Oh yes, it has zoom possibilities too. Not that dumb app, but like I can just scroll the little wheel here and it allows it to zoom in and zoom out. And this part is good. All you guys that I bought a gimbal and I never use it because I can never figure it out. The auto. The auto was like, I know how to use a gimbal and I use auto. <laughs> auto was a game changer. So for people doing things, Marie Keeley, who's, you know, sometimes coaching field hockey, like no, no there is none better people. I'm just telling you there's none better. It's the most amazing thing. The auto thing was mind blowing to me. Doc showed you guys the um, the shot genie, but there's a, like there's another level to it too. So um, there's there's a feature called scene identification. So you actually just point your phone at whatever you want to record, and the AI will interpret what scene that is, and it'll automatically recommend a shot list for you. It's it's uh, pretty insane. What? I didn't even know that. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, now I got to go back and look at it again. <laughs> that see i'm telling you the it's you explain something a lot of people came late 
it's not about the hardware, the cameras, whatever. They're making the software that makes the video. The cameras do what they need to do to get you to that video. So being a software-minded company first, because all these guys, honestly, where they all fall apart, they all fall apart in their in their bad software. I mean, they all got motors, handles, you know, can up down, upside down and do all the other stuff. But the software is trash. And there you go. There's only a few of us in the world who are actually trained filmmakers and, and editors. And the rest of us, we aspire to be like you, Doc, you know, but we don't have the background that you have. And if by making it easier for people to understand what shots they need to capture, it's going to elevate their the quality of their content. And that's the whole idea behind us using AI to essentially make flow your AI filmmaking assistant for all intents and purposes. Yes, and that makes that makes life easier for you. All right, so what is the best way for people to like just stay informed and know what's up and, you know, learn more of this? Um, well, first get on our email list so you can get the countdown clock like Doc and uh <laughs> and and second if you go to any of our social channels at Instagram, at Insta360 on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, you'll get a wild idea about what creative possibilities you have with our products because we're always posting cool, fun, creative content uh, that's powered by you, the users. And uh, if you follow us, you'll get a ton of inspiration. You'll also get tutorials, tips, tricks for how to use our cameras the best possible way. Um, we have so much content that goes out every day. So just follow us on social, go to our website, subscribe to our email letter, and you'll get everything that you need. There you go. All right, um, man, I'm telling you, I, I think that, I don't think there's anybody in the business doing what you guys are doing. And you know, I'm a diehard fan. <laughs> so I'm in there forever. Um, people, make sure you give them a follow. Again, um, uh, I will have some, actually, I do have, already did it. I have links I'll put in the description that will give you access to that. <laughs> Keely is making fun of the surprise face because, yeah, I did not know about scene detection. I don't know how I missed that, but I'm going to go pay attention now <laughs> because it comes in handy. It's kind of things you need for Mother's Day or graduation season, which is coming up, you know, very helpful. Um, yeah, there you go. It's super duper. I like that. I like the fact that you can you can easily just deploy it and then take off and do your thing. So, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Um, we didn't mention that it's the only gimbal, mobile gimbal on the market that has both a built-in tripod and a selfie stick. Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. I use the selfie stick religiously. When you extend it, right, doing this, because when you're shooting vertical for me, Mine always seems tilted, so I just give it a little bit of tilt like that, and then I get a better looking vertical. So, Black Belt Peddler, the problem that you're trying to replicate, let me explain this real quick, and then we'll be done here. Um, <clears throat> the The gimbal does have an automatic zoom feature, right? You just rotate the little jog wheel, and it allows you to zoom in and zoom out. Um, you can also set it to track people and things like that. But you have to remember, if you are sending this wirelessly back to your computer from a sporting event, not what you're looking for. Here's why. The amount of people out there with phones, wireless microphones, drones, all kinds of things throwing radio signal, you'll get like five steps before you get disconnected. In your office, you're not really competing with a bunch of other radio signals. In an event like that, there's guarantee somebody else doing something. And all you need is one person with the old school push the talk next tell, squeeze that button once, all bets are off. Like this even happens on pro scale when we're using Teradec. You know, a, a, a two piece Teradec system is like five grand with built in LTE connections that are not on standard T Mobile. They're on enterprise level T Mobile and they break down. So that reporter on the go kind of thing you're trying to replicate from a broadcast situation extremely hard to do from the mogul verse uh applications like 
Holly Land and their wireless transmitters help, but even then they're still not super inexpensive. You're still looking at like two to three grand for a decent Holly Land that will help you get that down. When you see it done on TV, there's satellites involved and there's a lot of money behind that look. Right now, it's not really accessible to us just yet. It's getting there. It's getting better. I live stream from the beach all the time, but I use things like a Nighthawk, and I do the control, and I stay wired, right, because I just know it's going to work. So I have, you know, a couple of people to watch the wires for me and make sure nobody trips and hurts themselves. But, yeah, it is literally built in. Oh, Keely, the built-in selfie stick is a game changer. It really does help because when you're shooting vertical content, the phone at my size phone, because I'm using a 14 Pro Max, it seems like it wants to bang into the arm that's holding it up. So just giving it that little bit of tilt sets it at a level that it doesn't seem to want to hit the arm. So, Oh, you can switch from – how do I explain that? You can switch from shooting a high level to underswing. Like if you want to, if you're doing field hockey and you're trying to show someone how to, you know, uh, make contact or to tell if someone got tripped or whatever, you're doing a low angle shot. It switches on the fly without banging into itself, which my other friend uh, rhymes with Wii Un. It crashes into itself when you try to underhang it. <laughs> so. That's that's a whole lot of drama. Mr. Michael, thank you for coming in and showing us all of the cool things. Um, yeah, we're <laughs> we're in there. We are in there. Is there a tutorial on how to use the Matterport interface? Do you guys have that already? Yeah, we do. We do. If you look um if you go to insta360.com and you go to our enterprise section of our of our site. We have a bunch of tutorial videos on how to use Matterport and, and beyond Matterport, the advantage of, of using an Insta360 camera is there's like 30 different virtual tour softwares out there these days, and we have cross compatibility with all of them. So there might be one that's better than Matterport that fits your need a little bit better. Uh, you can learn about all those on, on Insta360.com slash enterprise. There you go. There you go. That will cover that. All right, Mr. Michael, I appreciate you for coming through. Um, yeah, if you need anything from us, let us know. And we're definitely going to get you on the eCamp thing so you can promote more of this cool stuff. <laughs> like, uh, it will be fun for you guys to... I would love to teach you guys, especially how to do some of your shot lab tutorials as like a live so that people can, you know, do it and ask questions and things like that. You know what I mean? I'll show you how to do it. Yeah. That sounds amazing. It I love that. And uh Excited to come back on and join you guys again when we have something new to share. And uh, thank you so much for for having me and and for for being a fan of Insta360. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, people, you know exactly what to do. Thank you, Mr. Robert. I appreciate that. Uh, make sure you follow. Give them some love. Uh, I'll be posting some more stuff, and I'll send you guys links so you can go and you know check out all of the cool products. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you. See you at the next one. And don't forget, tomorrow is the Ecamm Live demo where I walk you through the app full on soup to nuts. <laughs> That's tomorrow at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern. Brain just went dumb. <laughs> I want to see you guys on the flip side. Aloha. <laughs>